Hi, I'm Chuck Dorset for Weaver Leathercraft, and this is the Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Now, this week, purely for the beginners, because we get this question all the time. I want to make said project. What leather do I use? Well, really, it's not as easy as that because we could use two to 20 different kinds of leather for any given project for the most part, but let's do this. Let's make it easy. We're going to boil it down. I've got seven basic projects, some of them pretty cool, but we're going to list two leathers for each project that are going to work nicely. So let's start right here. Super easy project. We're going to start with a belt. A belt is a great project because we can go as simple or as complicated as we want. Now, we want a belt weight about an eight to nine ounce, roughly an eighth of an inch or maybe 3.3, 3.5 millimeters. It's going to give us a good sturdy belt. With this, two options. First off, natural veg tan. With this, we can stamp it, we can tool it, but we're going to have to dye it. Now, not necessarily. We can leave it natural, but we can dye, antique, and top coat. Now, let's jump over to one of my favorites. This is a water buffalo. In fact, same thing I'm wearing on my belt. Now, it'll take a stamp, but not real well. It's a little bit mushy, but that doesn't restrict us by any means. We can add all kinds of decoration, but right here, no dye required. We simply cut, add our decoration, add a buckle. All right, let's jump over to our next project. One of our most popular videos and one of my favorite projects is a mystery braid. Super easy project. People just love to get this as a gift, particularly because it's a mystery braid. My two favorite leathers here. First off, this is our chrome tan pull up. Cool thing here, we can buy this in panels. So therefore inexpensive, but looks good. It's got kind of a nice finished look. This all time favorite. This is our water buffalo. Now we don't have this in a panel. It's our four to five ounce, but we do have it in an extremely affordable piece of leather. It's got some body, it's got some weight, but at the same time, it's supple. That's gonna braid nice, look nice, and wear nice. Now, okay, those are our two choices. Let's don't get off track here. But if we go veg tan, we absolutely can stamp it, dye it, tool it, and isn't that beautiful? That's our red pro dye. So we can go that route, but as a simple route, either our chrome pull up, or our four to five ounce water buffalo. For us costume folks, a pair of arm guards is a perfect place to start. First off, super simple design. Now with this, my preference, eight to nine ounce veg tan, that's more of a costume armor weight. Bump that up absolutely if you want to. But an eight to nine, it's a common belt weight. So therefore, if we buy a piece of leather, we have a single shoulder, it's about eight square feet, very affordable. But with that weight, we can make all manner of pouches, sheaths, arm guards. So with that, natural veg tan, eight to nine ounce. Single shoulder, perfect way to go. Now, if we want to add a little bit of a little bit of color, or we want our arm guards to be a little bit more supple for our costume, suede is a great way to go, always affordable, 21 colors to choose from. Now, with this though, I would suggest lining our leather. We've got a great video on that, but we are simply gluing two pieces of leather together. When we do that, they're going to react as one. So therefore, what would be a very supple suede now has a little bit of body to it. Holsters are a great place to start. First and foremost, we can go simple or we can go complex. But the bigger point there is we have a desire. We know what we want to make. So therefore, we're going to move a little bit faster learning. Now, with our holsters, we'll talk weight. But the first thing we do not want is a chrome tan leather. Chromium salts, it's going to tarnish our metal. Short of that, if we go with a veg tan, we've got no worries. Weight wise, for our minimal holsters, our smaller holsters, let's go with a four to five ounce and we can really mold that. If we want to bump that up, we can always go to two four to five ounce back to back. That's going to give us some solid protection. But also, a simple eight to nine ounce uh, holster is perfect. Molds well fits well. Now, if we don't want to mold, form, and dye, we've got a holster leather. Some gorgeous colors. Simply cut out your shape, sew that together, and you have a quality holster. Wallets are an inexpensive, great project. Who doesn't have a wallet? And we can go so many ways with this, but let's keep it simple. Back to the veg tan. Absolutely. We can drop in initials, or we can make some kind of a cool design, stamped or tooled. We can jump back to our panels. I love these. Again, Great place for this leather. 
because we've got a little body there. But look at that stitch. Boy, it sews nicely. All we have to do is cut and sew there. Now, weights, a little more critical. I would say a three to four ounce for our exterior and a two to three ounce for our interior liner or pockets because we don't want this starting to stack up with too many plies, thus making it uncomfortable. With that though, right here, about a three to four ounce, two back to back is just right. Little bit of body, that's what we need. Person bag. Now, we're stepping up a little bit in complexity, but not really. This is our pebble grain. We've got a video on the fringe pouch. We can also go, there's our water buffalo, buffalo again. Looks good, very rustic. And our patent leather, very top notch, clean and tight. But you know what, let's do this. Right here, we've got our Lexi. This is a gorgeous leather. We've got a little bit of body to it. So again, it's gonna be a little bit more stiff purse. Right here, this is our Pines Mill, a little more rustic. But notice too, We've got just a little bit more supple feel to that. Two great ways to go for purse bag and even pouch. We've done six simple basic projects in the leather form. Okay, this one's for me because I love bootstraps. In fact, I've got them on every pair of boots I have. Now with this, if we want to go with some color, really add some color into our boots, right back to that beautiful bright Lexi. But for this, my two picks here, Telfair Pebble Grain, love it. Five to six ounce, but very supple. And then over here, a Santa Rosa. Five colors available there, but that's an oily. So it's a pull-up leather. It's really gonna make a pair of boots look very rustic and loved. There are so many possible leather projects out there, we've just scratched the surface. In fact, that doesn't even sound like enough. So many opportunities. That's one of the great things about leather. We can do so much with it. So if you're new, don't be intimidated by all the types of leather. When you nail down the characteristics of a project, that's going to drive you to a certain set of leathers. Once you start on that project, you're immediately going to have a feel for the weight, the texture, and the characteristics of that leather. From that point, expand your horizons because there's no limit to the possibilities. I hope everything you make is beautiful. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects. <music>